Glad you could join me. Today we're going to talk about using matrix algebra to help us solve simultaneous equations. Now, what if you wanted to solve an equation of the type 4y is equal to 12? Well, you would of course naturally multiply both sides by the inverse of 4. And what I mean by that is that you would multiply both the left and the right side by 1 over 4. You would then be able to isolate y, and you would get a solution of y is equal to 3. We're going to use the same idea to help us solve for our two simultaneous y's. So let's look at our handout. If we had an equation in matrix algebra of matrix A times matrix Y is equal to C, we would then multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of matrix A. It's denoted as A raised to the negative first power, inverse A. And as you can see, by multiplying the inverse of A times A, this allows us to isolate y on the left-hand side, and it makes it equal to the inverse of a times c. Now, what do I mean by the inverse of a when I'm talking about matrix algebra? The inverse of a matrix is where when you multiply matrix a times its inverse, it's going to result in something called an identity matrix. Every single value within that new matrix, that identity matrix, is going to be equal to 1. So let's look at what I'm talking about. If we had two simultaneous equations, and we wrote them using matrix notation, we could then multiply the first matrix by its inverse, isolating the y's on the left-hand side. Then we could simply multiply the inverse of the first matrix times the second matrix. The solution of these equations would then be A inverse times the second matrix. But first, we need to find the inverse of the A matrix. Now this can be a bit complicated. And we're simply looking at two by two matrices here. If you have perhaps a larger matrix, the computations would be more complex. But you could use a computer to help you do this. But as you see, once you step through the process, it's really not that difficult with smaller matrices. So let's look at how to find the inverse of our matrix A. As you can see, I've identified the elements in our first matrix using the notation A, B, C, and D. This is important because it's going to help you to understand how we're going to compute the inverse. Now before we get there, what we need to do is find the determinant. The determinant becomes the denominator when we compute the inverse. And it's found by multiplying A times D and subtracting B times C. Now we're going to do a little rearranging of our elements when we want to find the inverse of A. Our first element in A inverse is going to be D times the determinant. I should say D divided by the determinant. Our second element is then going to be negative b divided by the determinant. And as you can see, the next two elements are the same idea. Negative c divided by the determinant, and then a divided by the determinant. So as you can see in this next slide, I've computed the determinant to be negative 10. Remember, a times d minus b times c. So to find the A inverse matrix, we are simply going to, again, 
D divided by the determinant of negative 10. This value gives us the first element in A inverse matrix, a negative 0.1. We're then going to do negative 4 divided by the determinant of negative 10, which gives us the second element in our A inverse matrix. We're going to continue this process for each element in the A inverse matrix and end up with A inverse. Now this wasn't that bad. Once we have the A inverse matrix, we can simply solve for the y's by multiplying A inverse times our second matrix. Very simple. Let's step through it. We have our A inverse matrix and we're simply going to multiply it by our second in by our second matrix. I've put the steps here. The first element in our resulting matrix is simply going to be the first element in the first row of the inverse times the first element in our second matrix plus the second element in the first row times the second element in the second matrix. These added up together give us the solution for y1. So therefore, y1 is equal to 2. We're now going to repeat this process to solve for y2. We're going to take the second element, I should say the first element in the second row of A inverse and multiply it by the first element in our second matrix. We're then going to give us 0.3 times 0.2 plus the second element in our second row again times the second element in our second matrix. This will give us a value of y2 is equal to 4. Now I know this seems a bit complicated, but once you step it through a few times, you'll see it's really not that difficult. You're just following the same procedure for each element in your new matrix. I hope this has helped you to understand how you can use matrix algebra to solve simultaneous equations. Glad you could join me. Have a nice day.